that small guilt that haunts you. Chill out and dive into the story if you enjoy our vibe. Don't forget to subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your friends. Count one. I remember my grandfather died when I was seven. My grandmother took it horribly. She fell ill during the funeral and ended up puking in the pews. My family had to leave a few days after the funeral. So my parents told me and my brother to say goodbye to grandma. We went up to her room and saw her lying in bed, so I thought she was sleeping and said nothing. A few hours later on the drive home, we get a call and hear she was hospitalized and died later that night. And I feel horrible because I never said goodbye to her when I had the chance. Account 2. I was not there for my first dog's final moments. She was the family dog, and at 11 years old, she was getting sicker by the day. Based on how she was acting and breathing, I had a feeling that she was in her final day. I tried to take her for a walk, and she shook and could not walk far. After bringing her inside, she did something I had never seen her do. She went to an empty room to curl up and be by herself while she slowly waited for her final moments. I sat with her for a while and just talked to her and cuddled. Later in the day, I ended up going to a friend's house and we partied and played video games. I noticed my parents and brothers calling my phone, but I was afraid to talk to them in my state of mind and ignored the calls. It turns out they were taking our dog to the vet to be put down. I always read stories of how dogs look for you when they are about to pass away, and it gets me every time. My family was there, but I should have been there too. I was not even doing something important. Account 3. I once dated an incredibly sweet and loving girl who would forgive me for my flaws because she liked me for who I was. I had just come out of a long breakup and did not want to be in the whole love situation anymore, so we had this game where neither of us would mention love at all. As we continued to date, she kept slipping up, accidentally saying it on the phone when she said goodbye, which I would playfully tease her about, and things like that. After many months of dating and blissful fun with no fighting, I cheated on her. I had been trying to convince myself that we were over and it was not going to work out because there was no love. In reality, I loved her dearly and was afraid to admit it to myself. She loved me and was struggling to keep up the game. We never reconciled. I broke her heart. Four. I'm a mom who just lost my mom in June. My boys are three and seven, and they talk so plainly about her passing, it does get to be a bit much sometimes. Grandma is dead. She is in the cemetery. Last year we did with Grandma, but she is dead now. I always respond with a yes, but we still love her and remember her. Two weeks ago, we visited her and I just lost it unexpectedly. I had been feeling pretty good for a while, otherwise I would not have taken them by myself. On the way home, as I'm crying, my three-year-old is saying, It's okay, Mom. I love Grandma. You love Grandma. She is in our heads. Memories. It was so sweet to hear him repeating back what I had said to him. It made up for how difficult the frank conversations with them had been. This is way longer than I meant, and I am pretty sure my first Reddit post. Just wanted to say, you handled it the way any kid does. I am sure your dad knew that at the time as well. Count five. One of my earliest memories is when I said to my parents, I love mommy more than daddy. I think I was trying to express that I felt closer to my mom as she was the one who stayed home to take care of me while my father worked. My mom quickly told me that that was not nice to say. She did not need to. I could tell by the crushed look on his face. I sometimes wonder if he remembers that day like I do. I want to tell him it is not true. Count six. I feel bad for my sister. Her kid is always like shrieking, No, mommy! Daddy, 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 daddy! No, mommy! I want daddy! I feel so bad for my sister watching all that when all she is doing is taking her out of the car seat or changing her diaper. Account 7. My son is like, I love daddy more than mommy. We are both work-at-home parents, so I figured the battleground was pretty even. Though I guess two-year-old me would not see, here's a cookie, dad, and finish your lunch, mom, in the same perspective. Account 8. He stood there in that elevator, waiting through the floors for about ten minutes. He did not know why he did not just get out the second he realized what I thought. Inside the box had done, but he wished he did. Maybe he could have taken the stairs sooner. Maybe he could have earned some time. 
When he decided to do so, it was too late. His phone rang as he was going down a flight of stairs. Hello? Dad? It was his daughter. He could feel the quiet desperation in her voice. She had been crying. It is your grandson, Jim. There has been an accident. I'm at the hospital. Could you please come over as soon as you could? At that moment, it felt like the weight of the world had been dropped upon the old man's shoulder. Under his breath, he cursed, I thought, inside the box. He could not possibly walk through five flights of stairs. He is not as young as he once was, but his anger was quickly extinguished by thoughts of his grandson. He was only four, after all. He remembered the time when little Jimmy plopped onto his lap one December morning, his blonde hair slightly obscuring his bright blue eyes. He lost a tooth that year after a nasty trip, but he was still smiling from ear to ear, as always, telling the old man how all he wanted was for Grandma to bake cookies for him again, how he missed her. After all, he said, he had not seen her since he saw her sleeping in a box. That thought of his grandson allowed him the strength to walk through all those stairs. Pushing through the pain, he finally reached the ground floor. Walking out those doors to fetch a cab was both physically and mentally draining, but he had to. Jimmy was counting on him. What occurred at the hospital to him was hazy. He could remember people talking about cars. Then they talked about surgery. Then complications. Then the pain came. So much pain. It lasted years. Nothing alleviated the pain. No alcohol. No drugs. No gambling. They told him Jimmy was conscious for a few seconds. He asked, Is Grandpa here? The old man's final thoughts as he pulled the trigger was, I miss you, Jimbo. Grandpa is coming. Account 9. Well, how's this? I grew up in Chicago where there was an incredibly crazy old lady who was a total bitch to all the neighborhood kids. One winter it snowed a spectacular snowfall. So I begged my mom to let me go outside and play with some friends outside my apartment where the snow plows had put up two huge piles of snow. I was 10 at the time, so my mom still had mom fears about me going outside alone and it was getting dark, but she said I could go if I went with my older brother who was 11. Strength in numbers and all. Anyway, so me and my friends are playing with snow and one group was behind one pile of snow and my group behind the other pile of snow. Suddenly we hear the old neighborhood lady coming by with her dog and we knew she was going to yell at us so we hid down against the snow. My friend hands me a piece of ice and dares me to throw it just to scare her. I'm tentative knowing I could actually hit her since I couldn't actually see her, but I give in to peer pressure and throw it and I hear a drop. I see her lying on the ground passed out. I instantly think, fuck, I hit her and killed her. About what felt like an eternity passes where all of us are shitting our pants and too scared to go see if she is okay. We hear a yell, and it's the old lady who gets up yelling, Who threw that? I'm calling the police lady to arrest you. She sounds disoriented and walks down the street yelling, thinking the culprit had gone down the road. About a week passes, and I had forgotten about the whole thing, when I find out from people that the lady passed away from a concussion due to some fall. She was pretty old and crazy and didn't really have anyone, so they think she had just fallen on the ice from the snowstorm, and that's it but I knew it had been me that killed her. I think about that day all the time and feel incredibly guilty for it. TLDR, I killed an old lady when I was 10. Peer pressure kills. Account 10, I have two. The first one is stupid, but I can't forget about it. When I was five or six, I had a pet caterpillar. I would take him everywhere with me in a little box with a flap lid. One day I was playing with him and somehow lost attention of where he was and shut the box. I cut the caterpillar in half. That one still haunts me because it was my first experience of death and the first time I was entirely to blame for something's pain. The second one is less forgivable. I had a pen pal on one of those websites where you send things to a child with a terminal illness. The child sent me a reply to one of the letters I had sent. I wrote out a detailed response complete with gifts and a homemade card and I forgot to send it. When I found it six months later and logged back onto the website, the child had died. I will never stop feeling guilty that I caused a dying child even slightly more sadness, wondering why their pen pal never responded. I am a terrible person. Count 11. I work as a CNA at a hospital, but before I got the job I have now, I used to do home health. I had a patient that I really liked who had MS and I could tell was pretty lonely and really enjoyed my company. When I got my new job, I told him I would come over sometime to have a beer with him. 
I got too busy with school and work, and a couple of years have passed now. I never did have that beer with him. But I think about the guy and feel bad every time I drive past the neighborhood where he lives. Because it has been so long, it would be super awkward to make up for it now. Hope he's doing all right. Account 12. When I was five, I was decorating Christmas cookies with my mom. I ruined my last Santa-shaped one. She gave me her last Santa-shaped one to replace it. I ruined that one, too. I still feel a sinking feeling of guilt and shame whenever I remember that. Or a bigger guilt. When I was 15, my mom had an accident and passed away. The morning before the accident, we were Christmas shopping, and I was a huge bitch to her, in the way 15-year-olds often are. She dropped me home and went to run one more errand. I never saw her conscious, spoke to her again. Account 13. My grandma had cancer and just had surgery on Fridays. I had just been there the week before, and I had an exam period. My parents and brother decided to go to her on Saturday two-hour drive, and I didn't come because of my exam period. Sunday she got worse, and we drove like crazy to the hospital. When we got there, she was awake and smiled at me. After two minutes, she went into a coma and died. I wish I would have gone to her that Saturday so I could speak to her. Account 14. I was about ten years old. I would play RuneScape all the time, and I had a really good friend that I made on there. If I remember correctly, his name was some variation of Albert. Now Albert had a couple million GP, and for some reason he gave me his password to switch something onto his alt account. A few days later I went to sign into his account, wondering if he had changed his password, and he hadn't. I got my player to a secret location as well as his player, planning on doing a drop trade. So I dropped his money next to a ladder, and signed out and back into my own player. At this point, I went to click on the pile of money that popped up on the ground, but instead accidentally clicked on the ladder. When I got back to the spot, someone else was on top of the money. Lost it all. If you ever see this, I'm sorry, Albert. This tormented ten-year-old me for months, and I want you to know that I never saw that money again. Account 15. My family had a border collie when I was young. He ended up being very aggressive as he got older, and after sending me to the ER one day, we had to get rid of him. My first guilt is that I knew if he bit one more person, we would have to send him away. He had already bitten my mom, sisters, and a neighbor. My dad and I loved him, though, and continued to try to work with him. He was very bonded to both of us, and I never thought he'd ever do the same to me as he had to other people. I was being stupid and grabbed at his bone when he was chewing on it. He bit me, and then I saw the immediate regret in his eyes. I clasped my hand and tried not to cry so my parents wouldn't know he bit me. I finally looked down at it, though, and saw lots of blood and immediately began crying. We finally found a home for him through a rescue organization. And the only time we could drop him off was while we were all visiting my grandparents out of state. My dad would leave early to bring the dog to the farm. When he asked me to come with him, I was in a bad mood, and all I wanted was to stay with my mom. He left and took Buddy to his new home, and I never got to say goodbye. It still makes me feel horrible to this day. If I hadn't tried to take his bone, he never would have bit me. And I never even said goodbye to my best friend, all because I was a little cranky. I'm sure he's living a happy life now, though. He herds geese off of farms and airport runways. Who could ask for more than that? Edit. So many of you are saying he was actually put down, but he actually was sent to a farm, and he actually travels around with his owner to herd geese away from other farms and airports. I sat through phone calls with my dad with the rescue organization that specifically rehomes border collies. The jokes are not appreciated. 16. The first time I saw my dad for eight or so years, he took my sibling and me to Paris. I remember getting into a really stupid argument regarding something as trivial as what we were going to eat. Anyway, being the little shit I can be, I obliterated him with some words, bringing out the you-don't-really-know-me card. This is all to a person who moved to a country to take care of his parents, is literally alone, except for the two weeks a year I do get to see him. Anyway, the point is I'll never live that moment down. Account 17. I was working at a homeless shelter food pantry at a nearby church, handing out cans of soup that had been donated. We get a lot of people who don't speak much English, and I was doing my best to figure out what they were asking for. So I'm handing out the cans, and a small Asian woman approaches me and says, Milk? I later figured out she was asking for milk, but I wasn't thinking straight at the time. She points to a box of potato leek soup, and once again asks, 
Milk? Not knowing what she was saying, I slowly said, Yes, milk. She looked at me and grabbed the box of soup, thinking it was milk. I later realized this woman probably didn't have much in life and walked away with something completely different than she wanted. I still feel bad for the stupid mistake I made. Account 18. This haunts me. When I was eight, I had this hamster named Hamtaro because I was a creative little thing. I got the hamster several days after my dog got killed by a truck on New Year's Day. So we went to Mexico for Christmas, 1.5 weeks, maybe only one week, and Hamtaro in his cage had this little external cage that holds food. Before we left, I filled up his water bottle. It lasts a very long time in his little food cage. For those of you ignorant of hamster cage anatomies, they have lots of holes to connect tubes or compartments for whatever. Picture. So the food thing had this little slider between the cage and the food compartment, I guess, so your hamster doesn't try to get into the food bucket when you're refilling the food and get stuck in a hamster food avalanche. So I fed my hamster the morning before we left and had a wonderful Mexican Christmas. I get back, and Hamtaro is lying dead in the middle of his cage, his food untouched, and I realized I had not flipped the slider back for his food compartment. He wasn't able to get to his food. He suffered. He saw his food, but couldn't quite reach, and slowly starved to death. I was a terrible murderer at eight years old. TLDR, accidentally but maliciously starved my hamster to death while on vacation. Even worse, I had a funeral and buried him in a sunglasses case. Two days later, my best friend, to this day, helped my mom dig up Hamtaro's coffin because it was an expensive sunglasses case. They kept that secret for seven years. Account 1. I was bullied in my first elementary school, and in the middle of fourth grade, my mom put me in a different school, where things were much better. In fifth grade, at the new school, a new student showed up a few weeks into the year. For some reason, I didn't like him. I still don't know why, and I was really mean to him, treated him like I had been treated at my former school. I've always felt terrible about that. Count two. Back in the 1990s, when I was like eight or nine, I had this friend who was really, really into Pokemon. We were both really poor, but he was way worse off than me. The people in his family were a bunch of shitty alcoholics and meth users, so Pokemon was really the only bright spot he had. He managed to get one of the old black and white brick Game Boy consoles and Pokemon Blue in a trade with some rich kid at school. Some friends hooked him up with all of the starter Pokemon and everything you could only get in red version, plus all the Pokemon that only evolved when traded. He was well on his way to getting all 150. Nintendo started doing these events at Hastings where you could meet a Nintendo representative and they would give you a Mew. He went to three of them at the Hastings he lived by. At the first two, they ran out of Mews before he got one. At the third one, he stood in line for like two hours and finally got his Mew. About a week later, he was staying over at my house. He let me play his Pokemon game. I made a new game, played for 15 minutes, then saved it wiping out his save file. It was unintentional. I just saved out of reflex, without thinking. It erased his collection and his official Nintendo Mew and left him with a Squirtle named Nugget and a Rattata named Nugget. He discovered the destruction of his save file and spent the rest of the night sobbing. After that, he didn't speak with me anymore. I've never felt so horrible. Three. When I was 10, a friend and I were horsing around Pier 1 Imports while my mom was shopping. We knocked over a display. We shattered a vase and broke a few other things. But there wasn't anyone around to catch us. So we quickly slunk away to stay close to my mom. For years, whenever we drove past a Pier 1, I would get this overwhelming feeling of guilt. Account 4. In October 2007, my dad passed away. I was living in Florida at the time, and it was pretty horrible. I came up for two weeks and left right before he died. I wasn't there for his passing, and I hated it. My first real girlfriend at the time did her best to console me. She was great, I loved her, but we got a little bit risky around Christmas, and she had a miscarriage at the beginning of the new year. We decided to make some space for ourselves, and me not knowing what that meant, made out with a girl at the bar and made plans to move back to my Midwestern state. She was married before and had a two-year-old son. I figured my mom and handicapped brother needed me. So a month or two goes by, and she comes back to me, and she never said I love you because it didn't feel right. 
During the whole time, I was very supportive, and the make-out session was a guilt on my mind. She was cheated on by her ex, and that was always a problem for her to open up. So, I made up my mind to break it off the only way an idiot knows how. She came to my house for the last time and while we were on the bed. She says, I love you. I stop her and tell her that I made out with a girl and I'm moving back home. She put on a brave front and left but was in tears as she drove away. I'll never forget or forgive myself for the worst mistake of my life that still haunts me five years later. The first woman that I ever loved and told me that she loved me, I broke up with on the spot. I think about it daily. Account 5. In high school, I was extremely jealous of another student who would flirt with my boyfriend. At the time, I thought Magic Wicca worked, so I cast a spell wishing that she would go away and leave me and my boyfriend alone. She died a few weeks later of heart failure. I regret that damn spell. Not that it did anything, but that I wished her ill will, and it makes me feel like shit to this day. Account 6. I was 22 at the time and working in New York City. One night after partying and drinking, I'm in the back seat passed out in Buddy's Jeep as we are going home. I remember being startled and woken up as we hit what seemed like a big bump. But when I looked back, I could make out what seemed like the silhouette of a homeless man that had been sleeping on the street where the steam comes up to keep you warm. To this day, it haunts me. I was never 100% sure it was a person, or maybe my guilty conscience is reinforcing that regardless it sucks. Count seven. Recently, I was on the subway going downtown, and the train was packed. I couldn't even turn my head in any direction without bumping into someone else's elbow or backpack. When it got to my stop, a woman next to me asked, Can I transfer to the two-line here? And after thinking for a moment, told her that it indeed stops here across the platform. It does? She said excitedly. Excuse me! Excuse me! She pushed and shoved and contorted her way around the giant crowd off the train, and made a nice path for me as well. And I headed towards the exit. Halfway to my place, I realized that there was no two-train transfer there. There was no two-train for a long, long time. She had gotten off that extremely crowded train during rush hour on my word that she could catch her connecting train. I've always felt so guilty, and I am still awaiting the bad karma to kick me back in my place. Account 8. My brother's girlfriend died and I never called him or talked to him about it until about six months afterward when he called me. He said I was the one person he really wanted to talk to, and he kept waiting for me to call him. We had a fight a few years earlier and didn't talk for a couple of years until, again, he reached out to me, and I really wanted nothing to do with him. He killed himself about six years ago on the third anniversary of her death. I do wonder if my inaction after her death had anything to do with that, like maybe I could have helped him through his grief. 9. I had unprotected sex with my drunk best friend who was engaged at the time. I know stupid decisions, we were both horny drunk teenagers. She became pregnant and rushed her wedding. We never talked about it. I don't know if she doesn't remember that night or just pretends it never happened. Now, seven years later, she lives happily married and has the cutest seven-year-old girl whom I am pretty sure is my daughter. I've never had the courage to confront her and clear things out because I don't want to ruin her life or cause her troubles. Someday I will have the courage to tell her. Count 10. My mother had been trying to call me constantly in April to wish me happy birthday. I ignored it because she was schizophrenic, and it hurt me too much to talk to her. My dad and I had to fly up to Colorado to pull the plug on her in May because she had liver disease. She knew she was dying and just wanted to talk to me. I ignored her. Every. Single. Time. 11. When I was younger, my siblings and I would visit our great-grandparents almost every day. It was hard to say goodbye to my grandfather because he was losing his mind and had trouble remembering our names. I decided to just jump in the car without saying goodbye, because I would see him soon anyway. He died two days later. It's been years, but I really do regret it. Account 12. In my seventh grade Spanish class, there was this guy who got picked on because of his attitude, the way he dressed, etc. Stupid, petty stuff. One day, I thought he was being annoying, so I turned to him and said in the bitchiest voice ever, Nobody likes you. 
It's been a couple of years since then, and I still think about it and wonder what would compel me to act like that when I know how much words can hurt. Not my proudest moment. Account 13. Kind of a similar story, but not me. When my brother was in sixth grade, he was really annoyed at one kid, so he sent him several texts along the lines of, Nobody likes you. If you died, nobody would be sad and go to your funeral. The kid was a little shit anyway, and my parents knew it, but they still made my brother apologize to the kid for fear of damaging him with the insult. The next week, they both completely forgot about it and now are decent acquaintances. At least this isn't a sad ending. TLDR, bro insulted kid he hated, a week later they don't even remember, and they go on with their little lives. 14. When I was about eight years old, I played a ton of RuneScape. My friend told me about a website where you fill in ads to get RuneScape membership. Immediately, I began filling them out, but I found out I could only get minimal stuff without putting in a credit card number. Because of that, I went and found my mom's credit card and would put it into many websites to get RuneScape membership. I didn't think it made a difference and thought I was getting free membership and all was good. However, soon after my mom freaked out because she had a ton of debt on her credit card and we started getting a bunch of random shit coming to our house, like hair products and telephones, etc. Because of this and other things, we could not make the deposit for the house and were kicked out. We're still staying in the apartment that we moved to after getting kicked out. I still haven't confessed to my mom about what happened. She thinks it was a keylogger that got her credit card number. Account 15 when I was 14, I went on a trip to New York City with my school. We had some free time in Times Square, so I went around taking pictures with all the people in costumes. I didn't tip anyone. Now I'm worried I put the naked cowboy out of business. Account 16. This may get buried, and it's a little depressing. Long story short, I used to work at a petting zoo with an older woman who I became friends with and would go horseback riding with. I was 15, she was in her late 40s, one day, my aunt invited me to go see Disney on ice with her and my cousins. I told my friend that I wouldn't be able to work that night, and she said that wouldn't be a problem, so I called my parents to come pick me up. Once they got there, my friend gave me a stuffed horse I had been looking at and told me to have a good time. And as I walked out, she said goodbye. Now, that doesn't seem like much, but I thought it was kind of strange as we normally just say, see you later or just plain bye. So fast forward to the rest of the night, I get picked up by my aunt at home, and the four of us go see Disney on ice. Nothing too special, but it was all right. However, I get dropped off at home, and as soon as I walk in, I see my mom sitting on the couch crying, and I immediately feel shaky and worried. It turns out while I was out at the show, my friend had committed suicide. I found out a couple of days later that she was bipolar, had financial and family issues, and had also attempted suicide before. I know it's not my fault and that there's nothing I could have done, but I wonder if I had stayed, maybe she wouldn't have tried that night and I could have had more time to learn from an awesome lady. Account 17. Even now, as a teenager, I am tempted to stave off the visits to my great-grandmother. It's easy enough. Two essays, a shit ton of math. But I realize that that is a terrible idea. I just lost my great uncle, and I hadn't seen him since last Thanksgiving, and our family is already separated enough. I will not miss this chance to see her because I know I can prevent irreparable guilt, regret, and misery. I'm going today. It doesn't answer the thread question, but you can see yourselves as the fellows that reminded me how important it is to just do it and not slip into stupid teenager mentality. You saved me from devastating guilt because I know she's close. Thank you. Sad edit, if anyone is still here, my great-grandmother died today. I'm so shocked, and yet I felt like it had to be soon. She had begun hallucinating the day before, I'm told, and then she passed away today at 8.30 this morning. I was at school. So unsuspecting today. And I prayed for her. I go to a Catholic school where we can add intentions in our prayers, never once imagining that it was over before I even said the words. I am immensely glad that I saw her when I did and did not tarry, as my first response might have been. R.I.P. Grandma. 1917-2012. Count 18. I stole $20 from my mom's purse a little over three years ago. I was a raging bulimic and needed money for my fix. Food. As far as I know, she didn't notice because she had a lot of cash in her wallet at the time. About six months after, I went into treatment, and I have been doing great now for a really long time. I still feel guilty about it, though. 
Yes, I had a mental illness, but I still knew it was wrong and was so messed up I didn't even care. I've been considering returning the money and writing my mom a note fessing up to the situation and telling her how sorry I am, but at this point she's so proud of me and how well I've done, I don't know if it would just hurt her more to know that I went that far. My parents did a lot for me to help, and I did a lot of crappy things during that time to my whole family, but that is one they still don't know about. Account 1 Almost a decade ago, I moved in with my, at the time, fiancé and his three-year-old daughter. It was shortly before Christmas, and I wanted to clean up a little bit in the den so we could get the decorations out. I grabbed the nearest trash bag and started filling it with my fiancé's trash. The next day, while his daughter was at preschool, my fiancé comes to me and asks me where the presents are. Confused, I tell him the only thing I had done the day before was clean. Heart sinking, he goes running out to the road and rescues the bag he had put all her presents in moments before the trash men went to take it away. Thankfully, I hadn't put anything too disgusting in it, and we managed to clean off the toys and wrap them. Three days later was Christmas, and my fiancé and I had gotten over our little fit about whose fault it was, and we were enjoying his daughter opening presents. That is, until she stopped and looked up at her father and said, Daddy... Why did Santa bring me an old French fry? I burst into laughter and said it must have fallen in there while he was eating dinner while delivering presents and quickly disposed of the incriminating evidence. After she'd gone to play, the entire family had a good laugh, and I haven't been able to live it down since. Every year they retell the story with some crazy variation, but it's all in good fun. TLDR. I accidentally led my stepdaughter to believe that Santa gave her a moldy French fry. Account 2. When I was about four, it was my great-grandmother's 100th birthday. My mom made me and my sister make her some homemade birthday cards with our pictures in them. We went to her nursing home and met her, but I refused to give her my card because I liked it so much. She died a few years later, and I have always felt really bad. Account 3. I'm 20 now. When I was about 10 years old, I brought some frogs home from the pet store. When I opened the bag, I accidentally decapitated one of the frogs. Ten years later, and I still feel horrible. I'm a vegetarian now, too. I always loved animals. But I think that incident really sealed the deal for me. Account 4. I apologize for the length of this. It's probably my most and least favorite story to share, and it took me way longer than it should have to type. So I hope you read it. My grandfather was my best friend. I had been homeschooled for a while, so at least two or three days a week I spent at his house. We used to practice how strong our handshakes could be on each other, and he would almost always win. He taught me almost everything I know. We built an entire train town together in his basement. We were so close. There was one issue. He had recurring melanoma, really fast and unexpected. In August, he was fine, his regular self. Come the next month, he was hospitalized, grasping for life. Being the stupid teenager I was, I figured it was the best course of action for me to just stop seeing him. I would let it happen without any knowledge and keep the great memories that I had of him. Fast forward to November. I had received an email and numerous calls from him, none of which I had responded to. I hadn't been to his house or even seen him in three months. He was dying quickly and I didn't want any part of it. At this point, he's in the hospital and asleep most of the time. He's lost all muscle mass and the only hairs left on his head are the white ones. My older sister came back up to New York from Kentucky for him, so I finally gave in to go see him, and it was every bit as horrible as I imagined. Everyone around was trying to say their goodbyes, and I sat on the edge of the room trying to avoid any interaction. And for everyone else, it was a one-way conversation. He had no spare energy. My sister, his oldest grandchild, takes her turn, and he opens his eyes to see her. This is a big deal. I'm the only one left, and I don't have any other choice. I go to his side and hold his hand, and I say, Grandpa, I'm here. It's Ted. I can barely contain myself. I didn't want to be there, and I didn't want to see him like that. Slowly, but deliberately, he repeats my name in a quiet whisper and cracks the faintest smile, squeezes my hand with the tiny amount of energy he had left, and falls back into sleep. After that, nobody wanted to be there anymore, so we left, and my sister and two of my other siblings decided to use the time my sister had home to have fun, get our minds off of it, and go see Casino Royale. 
The movie ended at about 1 a.m., and when we got out, my sister had a voicemail. Grandpa had died during the movie. Since then, I haven't been able to watch that movie, and I've tried to watch the newer ones, but I just can't bring myself to. My guilt is that I'll always wonder if I had not been such an ass and gone to see him earlier. Would I have been able to spare the most important friend I could ever have months of pain and suffering? Count five. When I lived in Costa Rica, I visited this really old-school, second-generation Chinese guy for acupuncture therapy. In the States, I paid up to $125 a session, and this guy only charged me $7. Needless to say, I went to him a couple of times a week. After each session, I offered to pay him, but he always refused and told me to wait until the treatment is over. And then I moved back to the U.S. without realizing that I forgot to pay him until months later. That was back in 2007. This summer, I am going back to pay him, with interest. Account 6. I played really rough with my brother's turtle he got for his birthday, I believe, and accidentally killed it. It wasn't eating, and he'd just lay around not moving much, and so I figured if I played with him, it might get him moving. I started throwing him into a pile of blankets, and one time I missed, and the little guy started bleeding from the mouth and later died. To this day, I feel like absolute shit about it. My brother was just a little kid, and I killed his present. 7. Yes. This seems so small to people, but I guess that's what this thread is about. I was 11 or 12 on a camping trip. I was learning fishing for the first time, and we were hooking worms up to the line. Don't ask me why I did this, but I took a worm and I just dropped it into the lake. I watched it sink to the bottom, and I remember being frozen with guilt. Why did I just do that? Something so tiny, so helpless, for no reason at all. I know I was going to hook it to the line, but at least that way there was a purpose for its death. Fast forward 10 years, and I'm very proactive at my local animal shelter, thanks to a fucking worm that made me feel like shit. TLDR, dropped worm in lake, now volunteer at animal shelter. Account 8. When I was younger, 8, I think, I had a golden retriever dog that had developed cancer in his left paw. He was literally my best friend. We went everywhere together, and I used to sit and talk to him like he was my brother. He really was one of those dogs that's just part of the family. Never, ever did anything wrong, snuggled up to you when you were sad. He was perfect. We taught him lots of tricks. My favorite of his, jump. He'd rear up on his hind legs and land, smiling. One day after the cancer had set in, I told him to jump. I don't know why. I just used to love it when he did and I hadn't seen him do it since my mom had told me he wasn't allowed to anymore. I didn't understand why. And ever faithful, he did the trick. The tumor in his paw had weakened the bone. When he landed, he broke his front leg, and the bone came out of the side. He howled and cried. Blood was everywhere. I will never forget the sight of my kitchen floor covered in blood with my family crowded around my best friend, who was whimpering quietly. We drove to the vet to have him put down. He was six. I cried as his breathing grew heavy and he left me. Why did I make him do the trick? I know his time was coming, but it didn't have to be that day. It didn't have to be so bloody. TLDR, I shortened the life of my terminally ill dog. Account 9. 20 years ago, I was at a middle school dance having a fairly good time. A girl I sort of knew asked me if I wanted to dance and I declined. I didn't feel like dancing. It had nothing to do with her personally. I just didn't feel like dancing at that moment. Later that night, while trying to fall asleep, it dawned on me how she must have taken it. Like I said, no thanks, because of her looks or something. It also occurred to me how much courage it took her to ask someone she hardly knew. I certainly wouldn't have had the balls to ask her to dance at that age. It still haunts me because A, I should have said yes, and B, I never had enough courage to explain my answer to her at school the following week. Sorry, Libby. Account 10. My dad and I would always go see Star Wars in the theaters when they came out, remastered Original 3. This was the only movie that my dad and I would go to together. When Episode 3 came out, I ditched my father and went with a bunch of friends. I have felt guilt ever since that day, especially since my dad has still yet to see it. Hopefully, when Disney's versions come out, I'll have the chance to go with my dad again. Account 11. OP. You shouldn't feel bad. You made that kid's day so many times. He probably knew that you had to support yourself. He already liked you a lot. Don't think of the negative. Think of all the positive things you did towards him that impacted his life. 
Account 12. I found a dog. A red Welsh something. Beautiful dog. Red fur. His name was Al. He had a collar but no contact information. I gave him food and petted him. Then sent him on his way, convincing myself he had a home to go back to and he had the way back. I found him a day later bleeding in a gutter. He'd been hit by a car and dragged there. The person had dragged him there while he was still alive. He had just enough energy to wag his tail at me before he died. I buried him, but I can't help but think it's my fault. A few days after, I found the ad for a lost dog. Red coat, responding to the name of Al. Account 13. Simply put, I feel guilty for my sister's death. She died in 1997. She was two going on three on January 1st. Two days after Thanksgiving, I was only seven, but I feel like if I had been a better big brother, it wouldn't have happened. She died of lead poisoning, which apparently lined the walls of our apartment. My mom would tell us to make her spit out the rocks. We didn't know it was lead, at least I didn't, and to go in their mouths if you have to and take them out, which we did. Except a few times when I was too busy to care. I could see her eating them in the reflection of the TV, but I just thought, it's just a rock, no harm. While yes... You could say I really didn't have much to do with her death. I feel that had I been a better big brother, she might still be here. Sadly enough, my second sister to die was only 15, passed away two weeks before the start of my sophomore year in college in 2009. I wasn't there. I was 2,000 miles away because I was afraid and felt that it was also my fault. She had a disease that there isn't really a cure for, except for a full bone marrow transplant. With the best possible match being me, out of the seven billion humans on Earth, I was her best hope. Well, the disease she had caused her many pains, and she suffered a great deal, having multiple surgeries and many of her organs starting to fail before the end. She couldn't absorb calories for about three or four months before, and had to have them pumped into her. One of her kidneys was full of stones and had to be removed. Likewise, so did her gallbladder. The disease would often be accompanied by random pain some days. She'd scream her back hurt and other things among that. I didn't know that her disease that I could have cured was the cause of all of these things. Only more recently did I figure some of these things out. Granted, while I was young when this was first proposed, 11 or 12, I fully understood the risks. If her body didn't take the transplant, she would be left defenseless without an immune system and would probably die within days. But I didn't give it to her, which is what happened. She would have the very short, painful life that she had, suffering and in pain. It wasn't always like that, though. She had good days and great weeks, but she would always end up back in the hospital at one point or another. I often think about the things she missed out on. I thought about them before she was even close to death. These deaths have caused me to be somewhat distant, not really wanting to show emotions because if I show any, they will be overwhelmingly sad at first. I put on a mask and hide behind it. I feel somewhat responsible and I only say somewhat because if I don't, people will try to convince me it wasn't my fault and I had nothing to do with it. Chances of successful bone marrow transplants or blah 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 doesn't really help because I'm most likely to be a match than a stranger. I live with constant guilt because of it. Despite all the good I've done, I still feel like a horrible person. I've pulled people from the street as a car was about to hit them, and I feel the same. I try to help everyone I can when possible, and it only grants me momentary relief. But again, it's not all bad. I have great days and bad. No one knows this guilt I have, and I don't really want them to know because they'll look at me differently. I guess this isn't really a small guilt. 14. Does regret count? When I was a kid... I had a crush on this girl I knew, Elizabeth, I posted the story about four months ago. I only saw her for one week every year, which compounded itself and made it even more unbearable. I was thinking about her all the time, still do. When I was 13, I had a few opportunities to tell her how I felt, but I could never build the courage. I never saw her after that week, lost contact with her, and now I regret missing that opportunity. I feel guilty whenever I think of her, that somehow still longing after her four years later is wrong. I had my chance and I missed it, and I don't think the guilt will go away until I actually get to talk to her again. Account 15. I was visiting Chicago for a weekend with a friend and decided to have a late lunch at a Mexican restaurant before our flight back to Texas. We had such a great time with good food and half a dozen margaritas each. After dinner, he got up and headed to the counter to pay. 
When he came back, I went to the restroom and returned to the table and asked if he was ready to go. As we left, the waitress and counter staff all smiled and waved us goodbye. We took the train to the airport and eventually settled into our airplane seats. Midway through the flight, I turned to him and thanked him for buying dinner. He didn't. He had only gone to the counter to ask for a toothpick. He equally assumed I paid when he was away. I could have called and offered a credit card over the phone, but we didn't. It still bothers me now. Account 16. When I was 12 years old, I had a friend named Mike and another friend named Chris. Over the summer, I would hang out and ride bikes with Chris, and being 12 years old, I told him he was my best friend. One day, I was hanging out with Mike in his tree fort when Chris came down the street on his bike. Mike didn't really like Chris that much and told me to duck, so I did. I was more of a follower instead of a leader at the time. He then started to make fun of Chris, and Chris must have overheard, so he rode home. The fact of the matter was I didn't stand up for Chris. The next day, Chris invited me over, so I walked into his house and went up to his room as usual. When I walked in, he had a gun in his hand. He told me that it was because of me. He put the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. It was an extreme reaction that changed my life forever. I only remember the screams from his mom, the lights from the cop cars. I went home, and I never wanted to be friends with anyone ever again. If you were to meet me today, you would never know because I am one of the most outgoing people you could ever meet. I turn everyone into a best friend, and I will stand up for anyone, individually, fully, and wholeheartedly. But there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about it and feel guilty for what happened. It will haunt my dreams now and forever. Account 17. A recent small guilt for me. I visited the outlet mall in Palm Springs recently, and I met this pretty girl with a sweet face in one of the men's shoe aisles. She was checking out shoes, but then saw me checking out a pair to the left of her, and she asked me what section she was in, looking kind of embarrassed. I told her that this was a men's shoe aisle, but nobody could really tell what gender the shoes you're wearing are. I said something else about how sizes are just conversions, add two to men's size to find women's, but it would be hard to find her men's size since her feet weren't exactly that big. She thanked me, smiled, hung around for a couple more minutes, then went on her way somewhere else in the store. I could tell from the body language and the smile that we really clicked. She seemed really nice, but I was so busy looking for my new kicks that I didn't even get her name. Later, I saw her across the store a couple of times, also trying on shoes, and she glanced at me a couple of times, but I didn't talk to her. Now I'm sitting here on the toilet regretting that I never got her name or number and the fact that I'll probably never see this beautiful girl again. TLDR. I was so preoccupied with trying on shoes that I didn't get the name of my potential soulmate. Account 18. Backstory. I was a fickle person when I was younger. Anyway, when I was 17 or so, I downloaded a chat app for my iPod and met a girl. She was depressed, but a nice person. Whenever I went on, we would chat it up, troll the trolls, etc. One day I went on and I was in silent mode so nobody could see if I was on. The trolls were harassing her and she PM'd me, asking if I was there, she needed to talk. I felt like doing other things, so I went on my way. The next day I went on and I had loads of messages from her. They started off like, hey, are you there? I need to talk to somebody. Things had gone south for her at home and she was going to kill herself. She sent me all these messages looking desperately for a lifeline, and I was too self-absorbed to take the time to talk to her. I combed the chats looking for her, but still haven't found her. Part of me thinks she killed herself, and I hate myself for it. The rest of me hopes that she's alive and on Reddit, then I can apologize. Account 1. My family bought a new dog when I was in kindergarten. It was a beagle, and I loved her. We had a fenced-in backyard, so my brother and I played with her often, running around and such. When we moved to a new house in fourth grade without a fenced yard, we started chaining her outside just to go to the bathroom. As I got older into my teens, I played with her less and less, and no one took her out for walks anymore. She gained a lot of weight, developed hip problems, and eventually got sick. We had to put her down when I was in 11th grade. I'll always regret not taking her out for walks more often and giving her more attention as I got older. Account 2. Wouldn't call this a small guilt, but when I was 12 or 13, my best friend told me that a family friend in his 30s, 40s, had kissed, fondled her. At the time, I was actually jealous because I thought this guy was awesome. 
He loved hanging around us kids and seemed fun, classic predator grooming his victims. I couldn't figure out why she never wanted me around him. I was a sheltered and naive kid who knew nothing about sex, so I never told anyone because I didn't think there was anything wrong with some kissing. Years later, we stopped being best friends in high school but occasionally talked. This whole awful story came out. She didn't want me around him because she was trying to protect me. Not only was she molested by this family friend, and her dad sided with the molester until their church uncovered other molestations leading back to him, but her dad also used to beat her up. They were Jehovah's Witnesses, and he would beat her for hanging out with me. She missed a lot of school, but I always thought it was because she was sick. She told me about one time when her dad was beating her, and she tried to run to my house. I lived a road away, but he caught her halfway. In my mind, I can still picture it, and it makes me sick to my stomach. If she had made it to my house, my parents would have protected her without question. Or if I hadn't been such a self-absorbed and oblivious little girl, I might have noticed or understood what was happening and would have told someone. I can't describe the level of regret I have over this even after 25 years. Sometimes I see her around town and she looks rough and worn down with too many kids and not enough money, while my life has been relatively easy and successful. She had so much potential when we were kids, and I still wonder, what if I had said something, done something different? Account 3. I don't feel bad about it anymore. But once when I was about 8 or 10 years old, I was in a clothing store trying on a jacket or shirt. There was a really cool paper character attached to the price tag that I found amazing. I didn't even like the shirt, but for some reason I took the paper thing. I felt like the worst thief in the world. And when I did my Holy Communion, I was 10 or 12, I confessed it to the priest and had to pray a little. I felt so much relief after that. Account 4. A girl I really liked in high school gave me her number so I could call her if I ever felt alone during an existential crisis. The only time I dialed her number was on her birthday. I planned to tell her that I loved her and that even if she didn't love me back, just knowing that someone as wonderful as her existed gave me hope that things wouldn't be so bad. Instead, I closed the phone and decided to write her a postcard instead. She swallowed a bottle of pills and died the next day. Account 5. I was a slacker in high school. I scored near perfect on all my tests, but wasn't motivated at all. I felt like I was too smart to be bothered with school. Anyway, I won something called the National Merit Scholarship, which signifies that I was in the top 0.1% of SAT scores or something like that. I hate awards, and my mom was so proud, but I shrugged it off. There was an awards night at school where people got cum laude ribbons and such. I was essentially failing and bitter about it, and I didn't want to be around all those motivated kids. I told my mom they wouldn't mention me, that I wasn't important enough, so we didn't go. It turns out they had a special ceremony for me, and I wasn't there. The NMS is a big deal, apparently, but there was just an empty stage. When I told my mom, she broke down crying. I hugged her, and she sobbed into my shoulder, saying, I just want a chance to be proud of you. That's when I realized how much my too-cool-for-school attitude was hurting her. She wanted a son she could go to ceremonies for, see happy about his college acceptance letter, and play sports. Instead, she got a kid who acted like an adult by the time he was 10, stayed in and read philosophy instead of playing sports, and didn't care about the little things that make a mother happy. I never needed her, and I realized then how cruel that was. It was the first time I ever made my mom cry, and I felt terrible. Account 6. I'm currently away from home at college, but the last time I was home for Thanksgiving break, I was playing with one of my dogs in the living room, playing fetch with her favorite toy. Eventually, I got a little bored and went to my room. She followed me to my room with her toy in her mouth, but I just shut the door so she couldn't get in. Later that evening, about five hours later, my mother knocked on my door and asked if I knew that my dog was lying down in front of my door with her toy, waiting. I had made her wait for five hours just to play, and I had opted to play video games instead. I played with her for a few hours after that, but I still feel terrible about it, even to this day while I'm at school and really miss my dogs. Account 7. When my son was about three months old, he was napping in a little vibrating bouncy seat. I was cleaning and talking to my mother on the phone when he woke up crying. I started making a bottle, and as I was shaking it, I realized I had left the sliding glass door to the balcony open. 
I was holding the phone between my ear and shoulder, had paper towels under one arm with cleaner in that hand, and was shaking the bottle with my other hand. I lost my grip on the phone right as I was walking behind his seat. It smacked him right on the cheek. I was horrified. There was no bruise or any other mark on his face, and he barely even cried, but damn it if I didn't cry every time I thought about it for what might have been a month after that. TLDR. If I owned a Nokia, my son wouldn't be here today. Account 8. A couple of months ago, I totally forgot to tip the pizza guy. He was really upbeat and nice, but the moment I gave him exact change, he just kind of deflated. I thought about how maybe he really needed tips. I felt bad about it for a while. Account 9. Guilt. I'd be the happiest person if there were a way to burn out all the guilt. Here's the latest leech clinging to my conscience. Four days ago, I made out with a buddy of mine's ex-girlfriend, who he had a very long history with. Not going to get into details, but lots of stuff went down. Anyway, he specifically told me that he would never see me the same way again if I hooked up with this girl. I told him I was his friend and I would never do something like that. Then I got drunk one night and ran into her and you guessed it. I haven't seen the kid yet and don't plan on running into him because he doesn't go out much, but he knows by now, I'm sure. The thing is, he is the most awesome dude you'll ever meet, and I'm a terrible friend. I can't even look at him now. Time to hide my face from the world again. Blinds closed, phone off, Reddit. Account 10. I used to be a very happy lad. In high school, I was very social, friendly, polite, and known as a happy social butterfly. Then college happened. I am constantly miserable at college. I come from a poor family and a very small village, and now I go to a very expensive private liberal arts college on a full-ride scholarship. I hate everyone at the college I go to, and I cannot stop being miserable and sad. Students here just do not have manners or general morality, and I cannot find ways to socialize with them because I do not do drugs or enjoy spending large amounts of money on material possessions. Because of this, I am almost always alone or around people I can barely tolerate. As a result, I'm always angry or miserable. I take out my anger and sadness on those around me. I have said terrible, vile things to people and completely destroyed others just because I could. I used to be so happy, I just do not know what happened. Account 11. When I was getting divorced, I gave my ex everything. I didn't care. I just knew I couldn't be with her forever. The thought of that made me sick to my stomach. The only thing I kept was our dog. Times got tough and I wasn't able to keep her. I took her to a shelter, but I was young and stupid. I was oblivious to the thought of no-kill shelters and such. I don't even remember the name of the shelter, just that it was in Aberdeen, MD. It was five years ago. And I still hope sometimes that she's living happily somewhere. I feel like a horrible person, and oftentimes I miss her. Count 12. I was in a relationship with the love of my life. I have BPD and went total OAG on him hardcore controlling, didn't let him see his friends because I didn't like them, etc. Fast forward, he managed to break it off, but I did a lot of damage to him emotionally in that amount of time. I really wish I'd never gotten into a relationship with him, or at least waited until I had my personal issues under control first. Account 13. Five years ago today, my grandma was in our living room dying. They said she had maybe five more months to live. It was 9.30 in the morning, and my mom came in and told me the hospice nurse said she would likely go today, and I should go downstairs and spend time with her. I took too long getting out of bed, and in the ten minutes it took for me to get up, she died. I've never forgiven myself. On top of that, she always wanted to watch Ratatouille, but I never made time for it. I can't watch that movie now. Count 14. For everyone who feels guilty about not being there for a dying relative, you had no idea they were going to die. No person knows when someone else is going to die unless it's medically obvious. Don't let this haunt you. Instead, live for them. Keep them in your hearts and memories honor who they were. And know that they didn't die with bitterness in their hearts because even if you weren't there then, you were there before. Account 15. Having a much higher sex drive than my ex, I wanted sex a lot more. One day she didn't want it, but I did. She said after some time that she would let me. So I started, and she started crying. I raped my ex, and I hate myself for it. I wish I could go back and change my mindset. I wish I could have changed. Count 16. When I was in year six at school, a new kid came, 
and I gave him a hard time because he was weird and stuff. There's not really a nice way to say that I was a total jerk. I eventually stopped, and was always okay to him after that, but he was mercilessly bullied by loads of other people in my year until the end of school. I'll always regret that I never took any action to stop other people. Account 17. On the flip side, I was super nice to the new kid. I told him when other kids put stuff in his coat pockets, let him pretend my Game Boy was his, my family was broke, invited him for dinner, etc. I convinced all the other kids he was actually cool. That kid spent the whole of high school bad-mouthing me. On the upside, I shoved him down the stairs and called him a jerk before we graduated. Account 18. I have a friend who is very dear to me. Still is, even though the friendship has probably gone to the dumps. He trusted very, very few people, and I was one of them. My guilt is that I couldn't be the friend he needed me to be when he was at a low point in his life. He suffered a deep loss, the love of his life. I tried, but I'm awkward and unskilled when it comes to being comforting. I gave him space after a disagreement because my low self-esteem made me think that he hated me now. But in hindsight, perhaps he felt that I've abandoned him. I live with this regret all the time, how incapable I am as a friend. Account 1. I had a dog from age 7 until 18. She was the sweetest, most loving dog anyone could ever ask for. She had always been a wonderful companion. When I was 18, I started dating someone. It was a really messed up relationship. The guy was 36, but that's a story for another time. Anyway, my mental state was not the best at that time, to say the least. This guy demanded my attention constantly. I recall an occasion a couple of months into our relationship when I took a nap for about two hours and woke up with 40-something texts from him and about 15 phone calls, all progressively getting crazier with him freaking out about where I was, what I was doing, who I was with, etc. That kind of situation. Anyway, I was at home one night in my room. My dad had a couple of business associates staying with us. As far as I know, they were all on the porch outside drinking beer and enjoying themselves. I don't remember if someone came and got me, or if I went to the kitchen for a drink, who knows. All I recall is that I found my dad sobbing on the floor and holding our dog who was howling in pain. We loaded her into my dad's truck, leaving his very uncomfortable and confused business associates at our house and rushed to the vet's office. We had to wait about 15 minutes for the vet to arrive. This was around 10 p.m. We lived in a small town, and all the while my dad was sobbing and my poor dog was howling. I was totally disengaged, texting my boyfriend so that he would not freak out about why I wasn't responding to him. I had told him what was up, but he wouldn't leave me alone so that I could attend to my dad and dog. I should have just told him to leave me alone or ignored his texts. But I was young and very stupid and didn't want to deal with his inevitable freakout if I stopped talking to him. My dog was euthanized that night. Her kidneys had failed beyond the point of repair. The fact that she was dead and that I was not there to comfort her and my dad in her final hours like I should have been didn't sink in for me for about a year. I still feel like total crap about that. I desperately wish I could get a do-over for that. Count two. In grade seven, a friend of mine had rescued an injured squirrel. He fed the squirrel acorns. I passed by an acorn nut tree on the way to school, and I promised him I would bring him some acorns. I never brought him acorns. It's been seven years. I still think about it. Account 3. My parents had gotten divorced and I was living with my mom. Times were extremely tough. I was really, really verbally abusive, especially for a seven-year-old. I would yell things like, I hate you, leave me at dad's, you piece of crap, I hate you. I always felt bad for her and couldn't understand why I felt the need to do these things, but it almost felt uncontrollable when I got these instances of rage. I pushed her once and she smacked me. It was not a real smack, more like she shoved my face away as I was trying to push her. It didn't hurt at all, not in the least bit. At the time, I was getting regular, really bad nosebleeds, sometimes just from sniffing too hard. My mom knew this, but when my nose started bleeding, she just looked at me in shock and walked to a chair and sat down. I walked away content with myself for showing her, but the next four hours when I came out, she was sitting in the same chair crying. I didn't say a word to her, and she enrolled us in therapy the next week and talked to the counselor privately. I'm sure blaming herself for my abuse, while the counselor would say things like, 
I just can't see how such a sweet girl with such sweet blue eyes could ever raise her voice to me. I still feel sick over that. 4. When I was a kid, I asked my mom if someone dialed 911 from a payphone, would they still need to pay? She didn't know, and no other adult that I asked afterwards knew either. A few days later, we were sorting through donated clothes for charity, so I picked up a payphone to call 911. It rang, someone answered, and I immediately hung up. Fifteen minutes later, a cop shows up and discovered that I called it, someone saw me on the phone. I explained to the cop that I wanted to test to make sure it worked if I ever needed to call 911 for real. The cop proceeded to scold me, and I felt guilty as heck. For years, I was unable to watch Rescue 911, an old show just like cops, because it reminded me of my actions, and the feeling of guilt was too overwhelming for me. I was around 10 or so at the time. Account 5. It was Christmas 1991, and I was 10. My single mom bought me a cat as my present that year, my first pet. We were having Christmas at our house, and my mom was running around the kitchen cooking dinner and trying to put on a really beautiful, memorable meal. I opened a can of wet cat food over the sink and drained it, mistakenly into the pot of potatoes that were waiting to be mashed. I was terrified to let my mom down so everyone had cat food juice in their potatoes. I still think about it and feel awful I did that. Account 6. My mother's boyfriend's dog was slowly dying. It wasn't my place to tell him differently. Anyways, I never really liked the dog all that much as I had to get rid of my childhood dog for his. But over the years, he grew on me more than the others in the house. During his last few months, I was the only one home during the days. It got so bad with the dog that I had to carry him in and out of the house to take a shit, if you could call it that. Also, he wasn't eating at all. One day I'm upstairs playing my video games and hear him whimper. Same as always, I told myself. I'll just finish up this game and go check on him. I missed it. I missed him. He died alone and in pain, holding on for every last second just to see his best bud come through the door one last time. He passed away on the landing in front of the door, waiting. Just put the game down. Account 7. About 10 years ago, I got my first and only tattoo, an 8-bit bat from The Legend of Zelda. The guy that worked on me looked like a straight-up cholo badass, tons of tattoos everywhere, including a few teardrops on his face, slick black hair, tons of rings, etc., and I looked like the kind of kid that would get a Nintendo tattoo. Anyways, we chatted it up while he worked, and I learned that he used to be a gangbanger and he had served time in prison, but he had since gotten married and cleaned up his act, and now has two kids that he cares about a whole lot. A total family man. It was a cool experience, but in my naivety, I didn't realize that you had to tip your tattoo artist. I didn't tip him. I did it again when I went back a few weeks later for a touch-up. Double no tip. I work for tips now, and I know how infuriating being stiffed feels. I've always wanted to track him down and make good, but the tattoo shop is an hour's drive away, and I don't even know if he still works there. God, the crushing not really guilt. Count eight. When I was 10, my two-year-old cousin came to stay at my house. During his stay, he kept stealing my toys, so I got really angry. Then one day, he stole a toy gun from me, so I decided to chase him. Unfortunately, we were upstairs, so he went straight for the stairs and tripped on the first step. He went all the way down and banged his head on the radiator. Sometimes I just remember that day and think that it was all my fault. I could have prevented this. Or what if he had died? Account 9. When I was probably 10 or so, I was visiting my grandmother back in the homeland. She had a pet rooster who was very cute but very afraid of people. While my grandma talked to my dad and uncle, I chased this rooster around trying to catch it. I was told to stop, but I didn't. I loved animals and wanted to play with it. The rooster evaded me by running into a gap in the side of my grandma's well and fell in and drowned. They used the bucket to pull him out. My grandma was crushed because he was her only source of happiness and company. I totally ruined her life at that point. A year later, she was in a nursing home, and two years later, she died. I feel that if I hadn't done what I did, she would have lived longer. Pets help increase our lifespan, and I just shortened it. She was lonely and depressed, and it was my fault. Pen. There was this kid back in eighth grade who was always very jubilant and energetic. He would always have a smile on his face and would never hesitate to tell one of his many made-up jokes. Albeit many of them were sincerely terrible. He was the guy who would always be by your side and spit jokes, often to the point where they became annoying and a bit harassing. 
So one day at lunchtime, my friends and I were roaming the playground looking to cause some mischief. Just then, let's call him Gary. Gary shows up. Now we were a tight-knit group, and Gary wasn't really that close to us. To put it shortly, our personalities didn't mesh. But we didn't want to hurt his feelings and tell him to go away, so he hung out with us in school. Needless to say, our hopes of causing mischief sank down the toilet, and an unspoken buzzkill vibe was felt among us who were closely bonded in the group. Hey, you guys, how did King Kong kill himself? How, Gary? He got knives on his hands and... Gary banged on his chest and roared like a gorilla. Now normally, I would have feigned a giggle, but this was the 1,000th time I'd heard Gary tell that joke. Seeing no response from the group, and with a big stupid smile on his face, Gary initiated another joke. What did the... I interrupted him. Gary, I have to be honest with you, your jokes aren't funny and you need to give us some space. You're all up in our business and you also have bad breath. Needless to say, we didn't see him hang out with us much after that. I feel guilty because when he went to high school, it's like he became a completely different person. Always wearing a stone-cold face, silent, shy, just the exact opposite of how he used to be. I'm still friends with the guy... Count 11. I broke a girl's heart because I had crippling trust issues. We had dated for a year prior, and I moved to go to a cosmetology school that would have only lasted a year. So now we were doing long distance. The distance got the better of us. She dealt with it better than I did. I treated her pretty badly because I was scared. It's hard to explain, but I ended up forcing her out of my life myself in fear of losing her any other way. That girl loved me and was the only person who I could talk to and show emotion towards. I'm not very good at making friends. I have no social groups here, so I'm literally alone besides my mom and siblings. I ended up not being able to afford going to that school, and now I'm enlisted in the Marine Corps and don't have anyone besides my mom to write letters to. I feel so bad because not only did I hurt myself, I probably gave her my same trust issues. She won't talk to me anymore, but she was always very impressionable with the way I acted and seemed to mimic me. I was also her first boyfriend and I completely destroyed her. Account 12. Last year I was pregnant without knowing it and drank quite a bit of alcohol. Two months into the pregnancy, I had a miscarriage. My SO tells me it isn't my fault that these things happen, but I can't help but think if I hadn't had the alcohol that I had, would we have had another child? Another factor into the miscarriage could have been my SO's positive blood type and my negative one. Again, my fault. If I had taken a pregnancy test when I thought my cycle had come around but it was very light, I would have gone to the doctor to get the shot I needed, but I was irresponsible and because of it, I had a miscarriage. I still feel guilty about it over a year later. Account 13. When I was in middle school, I hated my math teacher, John. He told a few friends and me that he was allergic to cinnamon. Two days later, I bought some cinnamon Tic Tacs and offered him some in class. He took them, thinking they were the spicy ones. He ended up leaving for a week. He was also the same teacher whose coffee I'd spit in, who I'd call gay, play techno music in class, and who I made a disrespectful MySpace for. Fast forward two years later, he became my cross-country coach, bought me food every day, bought me an iPod, and got me in the best shape of my life. He left the school a year after because he thought the school was going to hell. To this day, I still feel bad for giving him hell. Sorry, Mr. Patterson. Account 14. When I was probably around eight or nine years old, I went to a friend's birthday party at this place called Monkey Biz. It's a gross crossover between bounce houses and an arcade. I was sort of an oddball at the time and was excluded from the group of kids playing and whatnot. I wanted to join in, but they kept shooing me away, and I was on the verge of tears. I went to the arcade area to play by myself, still about to cry. I was collecting tickets from a game when a kid I'd never seen before came over and offered me his tickets. I was still angry and on edge, so I lashed out at him, yelling that I didn't want his stupid tickets. He dropped the tickets and ran away crying. Then I realized he just wanted to be friends and talk, and I totally shut him down. I cried the whole rest of the time. I still feel horrible to this very day. Account 15. Quite some years ago, I got this really awesome gift for Christmas. It was a huge Lego Harry Potter train, I believe, that you could, duh, build yourself. It was a really cool gift, but it wasn't what I had asked wanted. Not sure if I said specifically what I wanted. I made a huge deal out of it and cried a little. 
My parents returned the thing and got me the gift I wanted instead. Looking back at it, I was pretty stupid. Looking back, I was such a fucking spoiled dickish douchebag. To this day, I cannot forgive myself for it. Count 16. There was a girl I went to high school with, and it seemed like she had her own gravity for drama. Every day, she was crying over one thing or another. Most of the time, it was drama over boys or friends, along with other stuff like her health, family troubles, and her grades, which influenced everything, too. I genuinely felt bad for her and tried to console her through some of it, but I found it exhausting to spend so much effort listening and cheering her up when she didn't actually reciprocate as a friend for me at all, and still hung out with the same people who caused drama. One day at lunch, she had been crying, and her mom came to pick her up from the cafeteria. Her mom doted over her a lot, buying things for her and letting her stay home when she didn't feel like going to school. I said something to a friend like, Oh, Sandara's been crying again. Wonder what it is this time. Someone said, Her dad died in a car crash over the weekend. And I just felt horrible. I still do whenever I think about it. Account 17. Five years ago, I watched my grandfather for 45 minutes as he took his last moments of life when his life support was removed. I had not talked to him in four years before that point. To this day, I still feel the pain in my soul from that last gasp of air. Before, I was a 25-year-old boy living with his mother, still sleeping in his childhood bed. All childhood toys had been destroyed by a fire, and the family house is gone due to foreclosure and was torn down. But there is some good. I now have a college degree and a wife who loves me, and we are planning a family. I learned that you must love everything as though it is the last time you see it because it can be. One last thing I learned from all of this. Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. I asked for what regret feels like. Now I bear this pain of loss forever. I hope you don't make my mistake. Account 18. This one makes me feel like shit. My mom and I used to get into fights all the time because she had a drinking problem. The night she was shot in the head, she had called me drunk as usual. I got really angry and yelled at her, telling her not to call me again while drunk. I basically bashed her drinking and told her I was tired of dealing with it. I ended up getting a phone call from her house an hour before she died, and I deleted 50. the voicemail before listening to it. The last thing I said to my mom was horrible, and I'm going to have to live with that for the rest of my life. Two detectives showed up at my job that night to tell me my stepdad had shot her and himself. Account 1. When I was about nine years old, I had a little poodle. One day I took him outside to pee, but then my mom called me from inside the house. I completely forgot about the dog and went to her. I never saw him again. Account 2. My grandpa was dying of cancer. I lived far away from him, so every time I saw him, he looked worse. On what I knew would be the last trip to see him, I decided that I wanted to hug him. Being nine at the time, I was terrified that cancer was contagious. So I gave him a handshake. A handshake. I hate myself whenever I think about it. Account 3. In seventh grade, I had moved to a new school and was in the popular crowd. The guys in the crowd would all gang up on this poor kid and pick on him all day, throw him against lockers, call him names, and just generally make his life miserable. The other girls and I would cheer them on. I never stood up for him, even though I knew what they were doing to him was wrong. I hate thinking about the pain he must have been in. I hate that I did nothing to stop it and even went along with it. If you're out there, Milton, I am so, so sorry. Account 4. That I almost failed out of college because I was lazy and didn't study or do homework. And my parents thought I was doing fine. I was brought before the board and the only reason I wasn't expelled was because my grandfather died the week before finals. Every other semester before, I went into finals behind on grades compared to the rest of the class. I would routinely calculate... I need a C-plus to pass the class, B to get a C-average, and a 98% to clear a B in the class with no curve. Luckily, I am an excellent test taker and essentially always got a fantastic grade on the final, then followed it up with an email to the professor that was essentially, I know I barely did any homework or just did poorly on it because I half-assed it all, but look how well I did on the exams, curve grade, please. This almost always worked. The semester in question, though, I bombed most of my finals due to stress and anxiety finally overtaking me. I got two Ds as final class grades and was put on probation and brought before the Board of Deans. 
Really, my grandfather passing is the only reason I didn't get dropped from my major, even though I probably would have done just as badly if he hadn't. My last year and a half, I got my act together and earned at least A's in every class, but my GPA was permanently damaged. I managed to grab a pretty good job after graduating, though, so my laziness and procrastination didn't totally ruin my life. It could have gone a lot better. So heed my advice. Early college goers and high school students who coast through your classes now because you are smart enough to half-ass everything and still get good grades. It gets harder, and you will be in trouble if you don't learn to study and do homework now because it can totally bite you in the ass to take it easy now. Account 5. I feel guilty about my relationship with my dad. I forgot to wish him a happy 50th birthday two years ago. I always call my mom instead of him when I need anything. Just because it's habit something I got used to over the years. I'm not as comfortable talking to him as I am with my mom, and I absolutely hate it. I know that it gets to him too, but he won't let anyone know. I just hope he knows how much I love him and how thankful I am that he is my dad. Damn, this gets me every time. Account six. Just out of high school, I worked at a convenience store, usually on the night shift. During one shift, a coworker found a wallet in the parking lot, which contained about $600. He gave the wallet to our assistant manager who said, You guys want to split it? This was during the 80s, and that was a lot of money back then. The other guy did, and I reluctantly agreed. As we were closing up, the owner of the wallet banged on the door asking if we had found his wallet. The assistant manager said we had not, and he returned to his car. I was taking gas readings, so I was only a few feet from the car and could hear him arguing with his wife, girlfriend. She was screaming, I'm almost out of gas. What are we going to do? It was the dude's whole paycheck in that wallet. I went back inside and told the other guys, but they still didn't want to return it. I felt like shit. I still feel like shit for doing that. If I could find that guy today, I would gladly sign over a whole paycheck as retribution for being a fucking asshole. Account 7. I have always struggled with relationships with women. I've never been able to take one out, talk to them, or be romantic, etc. I've been told I'm hilarious and great to be around, but when I try to go out of my way to ask out a specific girl, it never ends well. Over the past year, I dated a foreign girl studying abroad here in the States. We started to talk, and we really enjoyed each other's company. Eventually, I asked her out, and we went on a number of dates. One evening, after I took her out to a nice dinner, we went back to her apartment, lay in bed, and watched a movie. After the movie, I tried to kiss her, but she rejected it and tried to tell me we were nothing more than friends. I told her after everything we'd been through that I knew she liked me, and she knew how I felt about her. After a couple of hours of talking while still lying together, she eventually admitted that she liked me a lot, but didn't want to be in a real relationship since she was going home soon and didn't want to attach herself to me, potentially hurting us both. Personally, I did not want to do long distance, so I agreed and apologized for pressuring her. A month later, it was July 4th, we spent the day together in another city about an hour away. Everything went great, until the fireworks started. I've always wanted to kiss a girl under fireworks, so I tried again, and she rejected me, citing the same reasons. Oddly enough, we became closer over time, and I thought she was really into me by now. After this, I became very emotional and lashed out at her on the way home. I screamed at her, cursed her out, and threw out every misogynistic term in the book. I was truly angry. I stopped talking to her after that. I refused to be strung along by a girl. Eventually, though, we made up and I apologized. She left, and we had a good final date before she did, and she ran up and gave me a big hug before I drove off. I know she still likes me, but due to distance, it just can't work, and it's pretty sad. I still regret that July 4th night, and I will never ever yell at a woman like that again. Ever. No matter what she's done. It's just a terrible thing to do. Account 8. About 16 years ago, my dad was in the hospital for some pretty serious issues. He didn't end up dying. Well, he did once on the operating table, but that's a whole other story. I was five years old and refused to go to the hospital to see him. Everyone in my family assumed I was afraid to see him like that, but in reality, I'm not so sure. I think I might have just been a selfish little kid. He didn't die, so it's a happy ending. But I still think about it and the fact that even today... Not even I know why I wouldn't go see him. Account 9. There was this kid in my math class who always tried to talk to me. I would somewhat talk to him, but not much. 
he stopped coming to school, and then over Thanksgiving break, I found out he killed himself. I felt absolutely terrible and still do. Account 10. When I was a lot younger, maybe four or five, one of my mom's friends was babysitting me. She was on Weight Watchers and was very heavy, but she had already lost 20 LABs. When she came to put me to bed, I called her a fatty. Even though I was young and stupid, I immediately regretted it and could tell it hurt her. When I was about 11, she and my mom weren't close anymore, so I don't have any contact with her. I still feel bad and wish I had apologized. Account 11. On my fourth birthday, my parents were going to surprise me with a new bike. They had this whole ordeal planned out. Some kind of scavenger hunt or something. But the night before my birthday, I didn't go to sleep when I was supposed to and walked in on them putting my bike together, ruining their surprise. They thought it was hilarious, but when I realized what they'd been planning, I felt absolutely awful, like I took all their fun away. I know it's nothing compared to most stories, but for some reason, to this day, a small part of me still feels guilty about it. Account 12. Not being home when my mom died, she had cancer, and in the last weeks of her life, she slept almost the whole time and couldn't talk anymore, couldn't eat, couldn't see properly, and was sometimes confused. All the misery you can imagine and more. When it was clear she was in her last days, I got scared. I was afraid to go home from my boyfriend's house, so I stayed for another night. I went home the next day, nervous as hell. And when I came home, my dad told me it was best for me not to see her in the condition she was in at that time. I couldn't even imagine it being worse than the last time I saw her. So I went to my room. But I couldn't calm down, so I packed some clothes and had my boyfriend pick me up again. She died the next morning, which was a relief because of the severe pain and suffering she went through for so long. But to this day, I still wish she could reassure me that she was okay with my decision to run away when times were the darkest, to be away from her at that time. I know she'd understand, but I want to know for sure. She and I had a great bond, by the way. She was my best friend. Account 13. In high school, I dated a guy. We dated from the end of junior year to close to the end of senior year. Towards the end, we got into a huge, gigantic spat. During the arguing, he yelled and asked why I never went to any of his improv shows. I didn't respond at the time. I had never thought it mattered to him, even though he was really involved in theater. I never went to a single show. There must have been about 30 throughout the year. When he brought it up, I could see how hurt he was in his eyes. It made me feel pretty bad to think of all those shows that I skipped out on, where he was scanning the audience for me to no avail. After that, I realized I actually had the ability to hurt people more than I realized, because I had pretty much always assumed the victim role. It was eye-opening, to say the least. Account 14. I went to an anime convention once. I noticed they had a room with console games, and more specifically saw they had MW3. At the time, I had only played it on PC and was pretty good with FPS games in general. So I sit back and watch this guy play the game along with two cute ladies in cosplay. This guy is obviously trying to impress them by constantly talking about how great he is, despite constantly getting killed in the beginning and going on about how the game is overpowered and stuff. The ladies are annoyed that they keep getting killed, so I casually ask the guy if I can try. He denies it, claiming that I could break the controller and he'd have to pay for it. Fair enough, I just watch. This lady, on the other hand, lends me her controller, and I end up finishing the level in less than a minute. They are impressed. The guy gets quiet and immediately leaves. I never see him again at the convention. I think I ruined this guy's chance of getting a kawaii cosplay girlfriend. Account 15. I'm not sure if this is a small guilt or just the definition of guilt. I had really bad teenage years. I put my parents through hell. My family was perfectly loving and accepting. They gave me everything I needed. They were the best parents money could buy. Even with all that, I felt really alone and like no one wanted me around. I got bad grades, did nothing, stayed in my room all day, and did absolutely nothing productive. They just wanted me to do something, anything. Yet being the little shit I was, I didn't. Several times I attempted to run away, and each time my parents found me, a couple of times with the police involved. Each time I broke my mother's heart. I saw her crying, but I didn't feel anything. If I could go back and just bitch slap sense into teenage me, I'd do it in an instant. I think beginning senior year is when I finally started to find myself and mature. I spent most of senior year driving around, going to the beach, and thinking about my life. 
I was am a really depressing person, but those are my own problems. I don't need to make more reasons to hate myself by inflicting pain on those I love. TLDR, I'm a terrible son. Small guilt? One does not simply measure guilt. 16. I was in an office building when I was eight, going to the top floor to see my dad where he was working. As I walked past an extremely old-looking man, he collapsed on the floor, gasping, Help! Help! I was so scared I ran right past him and went up the escalator. I learned later that he died. To this day, I feel like shit. His bulging eyes staring at me, his hand extending out towards me for help, and I just ran right past him. I could have saved that poor old man who probably had a family who loved him. Count 17. Last year on Thanksgiving was the last time I saw my grandpa, who I was extremely close to. I didn't even bother getting up off the couch to say goodbye to him because I was taking a nap after all the food I ate and just assumed I would see him the next day. I wish I had gotten up and said goodbye. Account 18. When I was younger, I was at a Shriner Circus Fair type thing and saw a kid holding up a goldfish he had won. He had two of them and I had one already. Being the kid I was, I went up to him and asked if I could have it, thinking he was giving it away. He handed it to me, being only a year or two older than I was, 10, 11, and I heard his mom say, Oh, well, I guess his sister's name won't get one. I felt really bad, turned to look at my dad. He nodded at me. But when I turned around, they were gone. We didn't even keep the fish. Account 1. Years back, I used to visit a website where people would occasionally post small fiction pieces, short stories, poetry, or even songs, even though that wasn't the purpose of the site. This one kid of 17 would post these comedy zombie stories, and while the melodramatic horse shit posted by prominent users would have endless comments of adulation and love, this kid's stories went unnoticed except by me. I would always post a little comment to let him know someone appreciated it. Others started commenting in time, but he would always send me a PM letting me know he posted one and thanks for reading when no one else did. In time, I began to get busy with life. I found a job I hated but paid exceptionally well. The more I worked, the more I earned. I also met my now wife. I stopped commenting. I still got the PMs, but generally either ignored them or replied with a thanks for letting me know. I'll read the ones I missed soon. One day, I logged onto the site after about a two-week absence. In my inbox was a message from the kid that was unusually plaintive, asking if I could please read the latest story, as it might be his last and he'd appreciate the feedback. If he didn't see me, thanks for reading. It meant a lot to him. I ignored it and didn't log back on for another good while. Eventually, I logged in one weekend and thought, fuck it, I'll read and stop being a dick. So I read them all and enjoyed them immensely. They were genuinely good. So I PM'd the kid, letting him know how good they were and to keep writing. I didn't hear back. A couple of days went by, and I saw someone he spoke to on the site chat room and asked if anyone had seen the kid. There's one of those chat room pauses where it goes from lines and lines of new text to a stop. I got a private chat pop up with a link to a post. I read through it. And it was a post by the kid's mom on his account saying he passed away a few days ago in his sleep after succumbing to cancer. I suddenly remembered a while back he posted saying that his cancer had returned, but he was doing okay. At that point he hadn't posted any stories and he was just another username to me. I felt shit. I still feel shit. I still don't watch zombie things because it reminds me of how if I'd have spared an hour, I might have made one of that kid's last days better. Account 2. I regret blowing my grandfather off so many times when he tried to call. He just wanted to talk, and I was too busy for him. He died about two years ago, and I still feel bad because I know he was lonely and just wanted to be a part of his grandson's life. Account 3. My dad's mother died when I was very, very little, probably four or something around that. At the time, death was a ridiculously new concept. When I heard the news, it was nearly incomprehensible to me. People could die. My dad had a mommy like I had a mommy. Mommies could die? I remember sitting on my mother's lap when I was told the news, and my dad was standing in front of us. I remember repeating almost automatically and incredulously, Your mommy died. Your mommy died. Your mommy died. 
I'll never forget the look on his face, and I cringe in spite of myself whenever I think about how awful that must have been for him. Just your kid bleeding out something like that while the wound is still fresh. Account 4. There was this really creepy, strange girl in my gym class. She was really tubby and short, and so one day, I was joking with my friends about how she was shaped like a bowling ball. I heard someone say, Hi, Evan. And I turned around and she was standing there right behind me. There are a lot of things you can regret doing in life, but when your words or actions inflict pain, undeserved anyway, I was bullied in school, but was able to dish out some very deserved pain here and there on another person, the look on their face will haunt you until the end of your days. Account 5. I was just thinking about this, actually. When I was like 13, my dad lost his job, and my mom didn't work at the time, and we had to move out of our house and into a cheaper place. We had never been super well off, but we'd also never been completely broke like we were at the time. We had to move out way before we found a new place, so I stayed with a friend of mine, my parents stayed at a friend of theirs, and my brother stayed with one of his friends for a while. When they finally found a place, my dad and I went over there to spend the first night in the joint. It was tiny, probably about 800 esky, fti, and the four of us were going to have to live in it. I cried like an entitled, spoiled little ingrate. It was shitty, and I still feel badly about it. TLDR. My family moved into a tiny new place after my dad lost his job. The first thing I did after going in was cry. Account 6. My mother and I had a falling out. We didn't speak for about two years. One day, about four months ago, my brother called me asking me to take her to the hospital because she was off her meds, on cocaine, and not doing very well. I refused, stating that the only time she communicated with me was when she needed something. She went into a seizure and passed away two days later. I think about her every single day, and I hate myself for what I didn't do. I miss you, Mom. Account 7. The last time I went to visit my grandparents before my grandfather passed away, I'll never forget. My grandfather and I were close, and it was his fondest wish that I learned to play guitar. He even gave me the guitar he saved up to buy when he was 14. He used to pluck away at his guitar at the kitchen table and loved it when my cousin and I would gather around and hear him play or sing along. This time my grandpa was sitting at the table plucking away as usual. My cousin and I were in the living room watching TV. I was about 12 at the time. I remember looking back at him and watching him play, thinking that I should really go listen to him and sing along, but I wanted to keep watching whatever it was I was watching. So I didn't. I never heard him play again. I still can't play guitar. It haunts me. TLDR, my grandfather used to play guitar. Instead of watching him play, I watched TV instead and never got to hear him play again because he died shortly thereafter. I'm a piece of shit. Account 8. When I was 17, I am 43 now, I had a job as a restaurant hostess. One Friday night, this kid comes in that I recognize from school. He was alone, but asked for a table for six as it was his birthday, and he was expecting some other people to join him. The place got crazy busy, typical for a Friday night, and occasionally I would run by and see him still sitting there alone at the big table with a bunch of menus. At some point, this kid's mother calls and tells me that she thinks her son is there expecting some people and that they are not coming. She sounded so sad like her heart was breaking for her kid who'd been cruelly pranked. I was so fucking busy that I forgot to tell him. I'm not sure how much longer he sat there and waited. By the time I remembered, he was gone, and I felt like the biggest piece of shit on the planet. I've actually thought about posting this story for a really long time, and it still haunts me. So, thanks, Exitorp, for reminding me to share it. Account 9. There was this girl in my elementary school who had the same birthday as me, the same classes, etc., but she had some serious social and mental issues. Nobody liked her because she was mean, would openly stare at you and say the stupidest shit. Our mothers are best friends to this day. I used to be forced to have play dates and invite this girl to my sleepovers, but I hated it. If people found out she was coming, they wouldn't show up. I would get questioned at school as to why I liked her so much when she would be mean to me and everyone else. For one birthday sleepover in seventh grade or so, she had to leave for a bit to get her braces tightened. In a cruel and bitter anger, I showed my friends how much I didn't want her there by dunking her teddy bear that she carried everywhere in a clean toilet and giving it a swirly. When she got home, we said someone spilled water on it, so she just kissed it and continued her annoying, rude shit. 
It's been years, and I still seriously can't stand this girl and her mother, but I've forgiven her because I recognize how many untreated issues she's had. I still feel bad about giving her bear a swirly. Count 10. They sent a kid with Down syndrome to commit a suicide attack on our post. He panicked and held his finger on the trigger for one long burst in the air. I lifted my head behind the shelter and shot him straight in the forehead. I am a nurse on pediatric ICU today because of it, but guilt is still keeping me awake many, many nights. Count 11. When I was a new teenager, 12, 14-ish, I used to play a lot with stuffed animals. I had a ton of them. I would make up stories for them and imagine a ton of different scenarios. Each stuffed animal had a backstory, and each play session was like an episode in the story. Pretty tame, but here is where it gets dark. I would use my dog as the bad guy by attacking him with the stuffed animals. He would fight back with the animals, so I sort of assumed he was playing along, but honestly, the way he snarled and bit the animals, he really didn't understand. He would end up trying to run away and hide in a corner, but I would follow him so I could defeat the enemy. Now I realize that I abused my dog. He would get mad and snap at my parents at times, and they didn't understand why. The dog was mine, given to me for my birthday, but after this, he stopped wanting to be with me. I started dragging him to my room so we could play. He died a few months ago. Account 12. About two years ago, I'm at home on a weekday because I had been unemployed for a few months by this point, and my doorbell rings unexpectedly. I opened the door to see my occasional smoking buddy at my door, who lived one apartment complex over from me. As she was one to do once in a while, she asked to bum a smoke. This time was different, though. After I grabbed my pack, I could see that she'd been crying and had a washcloth covering her arm. I asked her what was wrong, and she immediately started crying, and her language became indiscernible. Since I was having trouble understanding what she was saying, she eventually lifted the washcloth off her arm, and there were three large, deep cuts going across her arm. I immediately entered panic mode and tried to get information from her. Well, she tried to say many different things, but the phrases I could make out were along the lines of, my fiancé did it to me, I did this, and my knife holder fell. When she couldn't get her story straight, I immediately told her I was calling 911 and that she should sit down and wait on my couch. I told the cops what was going on and where they could find us. Eventually, three squad cars and an ambulance showed up, asked us a bunch of questions, and then took her to the hospital. What haunts me about this situation is that I was the only person in the area she knew since she and her boyfriend were from out of state, and I barely even knew her. Because of this, I was the only person she could call to pick her up from the hospital. When I got there, I found out that she was still in her room and hadn't been released yet. She had gotten all of her stitches, but there was still a nurse talking to her. Shortly after I arrived, the nurse left to get the doctor and told her that she shouldn't leave because her cuts were obviously done with hesitation, in his opinion. I was stunned at this point, but I didn't speak up, and after a lot of arguing between her and the doctor, he said that he wasn't going to stop her. I drove her home, which was my biggest regret about this situation. Also, I let her talk during the drive home because she was still physically shook up. The only thing I said in the car ride back was that, if your boyfriend did this to you, or is what caused this to happen, he isn't worth it. This is not what she wanted to hear, and she immediately stopped talking. After I asked her if everything was going to be okay, she said yes, but got out of my car angrily and immediately went into her apartment and locked the door. I never saw her at her apartment after this, and I didn't hear from her for three months after this incident. Eventually, I was outside smoking a cigarette, and she and her boyfriend walked up. They made some small talk or whatever, and she was all smiles. It didn't last long because I really didn't know what to do in this situation, and I never saw her again. Honestly, my biggest regrets about this are not going to the hospital with her, not making her stay, and not trying harder to check up on her after bringing her back. I wouldn't be surprised if people said that I'm a horrible person for not doing those things. But honestly, this was the only time I've ever been in this situation in my life, was honestly scared shitless about the whole thing, and was in such a panic that most of those options didn't even register. A few months after the last time I saw her, my landlord told me that she and her boyfriend moved out of town. I hope that she is doing all right. Account 13. 
In high school and college, I always felt guilty about asking my parents for money, even if the amount was just $5. We didn't grow up rich, so I hated asking my parents for money. I always tried to make it up to them by working hard in school. I'm in medical school now, but I still feel really guilty that one, I had to ask for money, and two, I perhaps did not go to a good enough school for them to be proud. 14. When I was around 14 or so, I don't really remember the exact age, I asked my dad to drop me off at the movie theater with my friends. Being the generally awesome dad that he is, he happily agreed and asked if I needed any money for the movies. I said sure, and that I would be ready to leave in about half an hour after a shower and whatnot. I have to preface the next part of the story by briefly explaining how awesome my dad is. He works all the time and buys nothing frivolous for himself. He has pretty much never said no to something my sister or I truly wanted. It's not that he just bought us every little impulse item, but if we wanted something of substance, music lessons, skateboard, etc., he would always make sure we got it. He was the fun parent who would sneak us out to ice cream under the guise of running errands or throw us on his shoulders, even though he had just worked all day holding a camera on his shoulder. Anyway, so he is dropping me off at the movies, and on the way there he says, You know, it is my birthday today. I immediately felt terrible, as I hadn't even said anything, nor had my family done anything for him that day. I told him he could take me home and we could hang out, and that I was truly sorry. But he insisted that I go to the movies with my friends. When I got dropped back off at home by a friend's parent, he was hanging out alone drinking one of his most expensive bottles of wine. He loves wine. My sister was at work or something, and my mom was actually out of state at the time doing some business training thing. I hung out with him for a while, and he eventually wanted to go to bed. It was a pretty lame night. Looking back, I think it would have made him a lot happier if I had asked him to go to the movies with me, or said it was his birthday and we should do something together like order pizza and watch DVDs. Account 15. I haven't spoken to my father in seven years. When my parents got divorced, my mom convinced me he was an evil person, and that if I loved her, I had to hate him. I made it extremely hard on him told him I hated him when I saw him once every two weeks, and told him I wished my stepdad could adopt me so my real father would just leave my life forever. On Christmas seven years ago, he called to say hi, and I shoved it in his face. He was silent for a while and then said, Abe can have you, give the phone to your mom. Abe was my stepdad. That was the last time I heard from him. I feel awful about it. Account 16. One day, a carpet man came to fit the carpet, obviously. I was around 13. He was a very innocent, lovely man, and a little bit mental. He was at my house all day. My mom made him a coffee, then went out. While she was gone, I offered to make him a coffee, and I just remember the carpet man's face lighting up in delight. I made him the coffee and left it on the kitchen side and totally forgot about it. Oh, the guilt. Account 17. Father got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer last December, nine months after I lost my mother to breast cancer. I was home on break from college and spent every day with him in the hospital for three weeks. The one day I didn't go visit him, I had a job interview and went to go visit a friend at school who had just got back from Afghanistan. He went in for a simple procedure, didn't take well to the anesthetic, and didn't wake up. Still dealing with it today. Account 18. One time I shot a lizard with an airsoft rifle on a dare. I could see the dent in his skull and he just started twitching before he died. I felt like the worst goddamn human being on the planet after that. It's strange how easily we get the feels over things like animals and toys, etc., but I regret it all the time. 